What's up, Madden 16 fans? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at part two of a video that we did yesterday. So, if you guys missed yesterday's video, I would recommend watching it. This, these are two; these two videos that we're doing uh, are going to help you score more touchdowns in the red zone. And yesterday we talked about um, the first component, and they both come from the same play. This play, slot out. And uh, yesterday we talked about how to utilize this play from about the 20 yard line to about the 10 yard line. Today we're going to talk about how to use this play from the 10 yard line to about the 5 yard line. Okay, so that's going to be the target window. Uh, so again, we're in the St. Louis Rams offensive playbook. You can find the uh, information that we're using, uh, like playbook and, and team and all that stuff, in the description of this video. I also did an ebook on the St. Louis Rams playbook, so you can find that in the description as well. So, uh, real quick, just wanted to recap what we did yesterday. So, we talked about this play from about the 15, about the 20 yard line to about the 10 yard line. This is very effective. Uh, and what we showed was we would vote, we would motion the receiver to the right side of the screen. Uh, we would do a couple of other adjustments. And what this would do was it would create a nice little motion snap out route kind of deal for Des Bryant. Now, when we move into this uh, section of the field, about this 10 yard line section, it actually changes the dynamic a little bit because this post route to the tight end is no longer as effective. It still can work just fine, uh, but it's not as effective. Uh, okay, so let me give you an example. So here we're going to try to throw this route to Witten, and it's it's just kind of a little it's a little bit of a tight window, and you can still get that in there, uh, but the closer you get, you know, when you get to about you know somewhere in here about this five yard line window, uh, this is where things start to kind of really get tight and compressed and we're not able to hit this route as you can see there he'll jump out of bounds so we're trying to add, add on to this just a little bit and so what we like to do from from this section of the field about the 10 yard line to about the five yard line is instead of motioning des bryant we're going to motion uh terrence williams here so what terrence williams is going to we're, we're going to motion him to the right and we're going to you know hopefully they think this is similar uh, to what we were doing with Des Bryant. So we're just going to bring him across. I like to put McFadden on the in route. This is going to create a nice little uh, little levels play. Uh, but you, your first read here, you've got Terrence Williams. And I don't know why he dove like that, but we end up throwing an interception. But what this does a really good job against guys is it does a good job against man-to-man, -man, similar to what we were doing uh, before with the motion snap corner route. Now we're going to have a motion snap in route to Terrence Williams comes across, it's going to give him unbumpable, and he's going to get wide open against man-to-man. -man. Uh, I would recommend having a receiver here with about 96 route running if you can in Madden Ultimate Team. If you can't, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, another thing you may do is you may put your guy Cole Beasley here on a hitch route. This is going to give you an even cleaner uh, look against man-to-man -man because they're, it's going to be very difficult to stop you if they're going to go man-to-man. -man. If you do all of those things, um, as you can see, we can easily hit that low pass lead to Cole Beasley. So those are a couple of things against man-to-man. -man. Now what I want to do now is show you how we use this play against zone coverage. So for here's a cover two. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit, uh, we're going to hold left L1, and we're going to throw a high pass lead to Des Bryant. Uh, now this is why you want to have a really, really good uh, receiver over there on that far on that far left, because what he's going to do is, you know, he's going to be going up for aggressive catches. So just high pass lead this route to Des Bryant, and as you can see, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one animation, and it's similar to what we were trying to get yesterday uh, with Jason Witten. I'll show it to you again here. But you just want to high pass lead, give him that one-on-one, -on -one, and it's an aggressive catch. So again, now this is kind of a – normally in the red zone, they're going to run plays like cover two. They're going to run plays like uh, – they're going to take safety coverage away. So it's going to give you one-on-ones, which is nice, which is what's going to help you out with this play. So here, this is a cover two. And you're going to see we're going to be able to get that nice little high pass lead animation. And similar to yesterday, the concept and the reason this play works so effectively is because only my receiver can make that catch. Only Des Bryant can catch that football. It's very, very hard for the defense to intercept this ball, uh, especially when you use that high pass lead. Personally, I'm going to recommend to uh, hold the left trigger uh, at 3 o'clock uh, when you're doing this. So we're going to pass lead it uh, inside. Uh, inside pass lead to Des Bryant, and normally this is going to help. Now sometimes he'll overthrow it, but again, like I said, you know, this way it's it's only our only our receiver can make a play on this football. Nobody else can go for it, and and that's nice. Another thing we can do too is we can do the same kind of thing. Um, I forgot to put Darren McFadden on our on a clear out route on the little in route here, 
But what we can also do with this, if we, you know, we don't like the look to Des Bryant, we can easily just check this down uh, to Terrence Williams on a little crossing pattern. It does very, very effective, guys. Don't underestimate it. But like I said, what they'll start doing is they'll start, you know, they'll start they'll do something like this. You'll you'll see something like this, guys. If you're if you're around long enough, you'll see some something like this where maybe they use it as safety or whatever, and you know they know the crossing pattern to the tight ends there. So now they're going to come down, and we're able to sneak that backside uh, high pass lead into Des Bryant. Now again, normally, you know, we're we're not going to even be in this situation, so this really is kind of a situational call. But it's a late throw to Des Bryant on the crossing, so you know you don't want to single in on him again. The the real money route for this this play, in my opinion, is this route to Terrence Williams because it beats man. It also beats zone with the with this with where it comes in on the field. So I would you know recommend hitting him more times than not. But then what you're going to be able to do off of that is they're going to start user controlling that route. What that's going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you uh, time in the pocket, and I hit Des Bryant. And for some reason, he's not going up and giving me the animation. But normally, he will actually go up for this animation. I want to give you one other adjustment that you can do that could make this uh, play a little bit better. Uh, so, so I would you go know, max protect here. So what that's going to do is going to block your running back. It's going to block your tight end. And then you want to take Jason Witten and put him on a little out pattern. What this is going to do is it's going to give Des Bryant some room to come. It's going to give him a better one-on-one -on -one matchup. So here he comes across. And as you can see, that's what we're looking for, that kind of animation. Now, normally he will catch that football, um, you know, so so just keep that in mind. This also does, means we don't have to worry about hot routing McFadden. We'll have plenty of time in the pocket. Uh, and again, there it is. There's that throw. Like I said, I don't know why Des Bryant's not quite catching this. Uh, but let's scoot up a little bit to the five-yard line, I'll show you. Because the 10-yard line, you're still kind of in that window where you could probably throw it to Jason Witten. But now we're down in this five-yard line. We're, there's no way we can throw this. There's no way we can throw this ball to Jason Witten because he's just not enough room. So here we'll show you. Dez comes across, and now he's coming at that angle uh, that we want. I don't know why he's not. It may have something to do with us going cover two. I don't know. Normally he goes up for that, so I don't know what's going on right now. It may just be a practice mode type of deal. But there's that crossing pattern. I don't know what Tony, maybe Tony Romo is just throwing the ball. I don't know what's going on with him right now. But let's let's switch out of the cover two. Let's go to like a cover three or something. Sorry, I, I don't know what. Nor I mean, I've thrown these for several touchdowns. So try these in game and let me know. But just hold that high pass lead. Tony Romo's just throwing the ball in the back of the end zone for some reason. So I don't know what quite to say. And see, you can just throw a regular bullet pass and he'll, he'll catch it. So, but the reason I like to throw the high point pass is because it's a safer throw. So there you see, and that's what we want right there. There's the animation. So you may not want a pass lead. You may not want to hold that pass lead. Um, you know, it, it's up to you. I would experiment. The more accurate your quarterback, the better you can do the pass leads. Um, I don't know what's going on with Romo, but he's not making the throws. But anyway, so there you see, this is just a concept. Uh, tomorrow we're going to finish this off and show you one other way that you can score. We're going to show you how to score inside the five-yard line. Uh, with some passing concepts we've developed from the St. Louis Rams playbook. So it's all in the same book. And this has been a nice little red zone scoring series. Tomorrow's video, uh, I'd highly recommend watching it because it can help you with two-point conversions. It's going to show you basically how to score on the goal line. So that's this section of the field right here from the five-yard line to the goal line. Um, you know, this kind of split section uh, is, is actually a very difficult section to score. So anyways, guys, in closing, uh, I would just recommend, you know, practicing this up. It's a very, very effective play uh, once you get the hang of it. So just mess around with the pass leads and let me know what you guys think. Also, guys, in the comments, if you could do me a favor and let me know some of the types of videos that you're looking to see. Uh, I'm looking to produce some different types of content that's actually going to help you. So let me know. Just some of, just give me some ideas of things that I can and can videos that I can make that are going to be very beneficial and helpful to you guys as you go through your Madden, uh, the rest of Madden 16 and into Madden 17. So with that in mind, guys, I want to thank you for watching today's video, and I look forward to talking to you in the comments.